हेलो वेलकम फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू आवर यूट्यूब चैनल एस बी सी केमिस्ट्री टूडे वी विल डिस्कस अनदर टॉपिक फ्रॉम आवर सीरीज कोआर्डिनेशन केमिस्ट्री सो द नेक्स्ट लेक्चर इन दिस सीरीज इज ऑफ कोआर्डिनेशन केमिस्ट्री दैट इज वैलेंस बॉन्ड थेरी ऑफ कोआर्डिनेशन कंपाउंड्स यू कैन सी है द वैलेंस बॉन्ड थेरी इन दिस वी विल सी द पॉस्टुलेट्स ऑफ वी बी टी द वैलेंस बॉन्ड थेरी अप्लाइड टू फोर कोआर्डिनेशन कॉम्प्लेक्सेज Valence bond theory applied to the six coordination complexes, the inner and outer orbital complexes, and the last thing that is the limitations of valence bond theory. Now we will see one by one. First, we will see the postulates of valence bond theory. So the first postulates of the valence bond theory. So valence bond theory it was proposed by the Pauling, and the first postulate of this theory is that the central metal atom makes available the second orbitals equal to its coordination number for the formation of bonds with the ligands now second is the vacant orbitals of the metal atoms they will hybridize to form the new hybrid orbitals of equivalent energy third postulate is the hybrid orbitals which are formed they are they are directional in nature and they have the specific space in the in the space the positions so each ligand has a lone pair of electrons and last is the empty orbitals or the vacant orbitals that are the hybrid orbitals formed by the metal atom they will overlap with the field orbitals of the ligand forming the metal ligand coordinate bond now next we will see the applications of valence bond theory to the four coordinate complexes so first example is that is the tetraamine and nickel ion that is in this complex we can observe that the nickel is central metal atom and the amines are the ligands now the nickel ion in this complex is a paramagnetic in nature and has the two unpaired electrons now the nickel atom it has the electronic configuration 3d8 4s2 now first we can observe here how the electrons are distributed in the orbitals so 3d8 4s2 so they are the two unpaired electrons in the d orbitals now the nickel atom is in the plus 2 oxidation state and therefore the electronic configuration it now becomes 3d8 4s0 and 4p0 now the empty s r 1 s orbital and 3p orbitals they will hybridize for the four new hybrid orbitals and therefore the hybridization is sp3 hybridization and these newly formed sp3 hybrid orbitals they will are vacant and they will take the one lone pair of electrons from the main ligands and therefore the hybridization of this complex is sp3 hybridization so this complex is having the hybridization is sp3 and its structure is tetrahedral in nature so that is a canonical you know, tetrahedral structure now next we will see the next example that is the tetracyclic nickel ion so in this the nickel is the central metal atom and the nitride that is cyanide is the ligand and this complex is diamagnetic in nature and has the no unpaired electrons so again the nickel atom has the electronic configuration 3d8 4s2 and next the nickel atom how the electrons are distributed that is the 3d8 and 4s2 now next the nickel atom is in the plus 2 oxidation state therefore that is the 3d8 4s0 but in the complex there are the no unpaired electrons and the complex is diamagnetic in nature therefore all the electrons they will get paired and now the vacant orbitals you can observe here that is the 1d 1s and 2p orbitals they will hybridize to form the dsp2 hybridization and therefore the hybridization is dsp2 and the four hy hybridized orbitals they will have occupy the lone pair of electrons from the the nitride ions that is the cyanide ions so here the hybridization is dsp2 hybridization so the complex having the hybridization dsp2 and the structure is square planar structure so that is the next complex of the second application of valence bond theory to the four coordinate complexes now we will see the applications of valence bond theory to the six coordinate complexes so in the six coordinate complexes the first example that is the hexa fluoroferric ion so here the ion is the central metal atom and the fluoro that is the fluorine are the, the ligands now here the ion the ion is the paramagnetic in nature and has the four unpaired electrons now the electronic configuration of the fp atom that is the 3d6 4s2 
Now you can observe here the FP atom having the electronic configuration 3D, 6, 4S, 2 and 4P, 0. Now here the FP atom is in the plus 2 oxidation state. Therefore, the electronic configuration now it becomes 3D, 6, 4S, 0, 4P, 0. Now the second orbitals they are the S, P and the T. So here the 1S orbital, 3P orbitals and 2D orbitals they will hybridize to form the sp3d2 hybridization and the sp3d2 hybridized orbitals they will occupy the lone pair of electrons from the fluorine ions and therefore so you can observe here the s p and d orbitals they are involved in the, the hybridization and therefore the hybridization is sp3d2 hybridization so that is one type of hybridization is sp3d2 and the geometry that is the octahedral geometry now here we can see the another example that is the hexacyanide ferret ion. So that is here the nitrate or cyanide ion is the central, it is the ligand and the ion is the central metal atom. So Fe ion here is the diamagnetic in nature and has no unpaired electrons. So here you can observe here the electronic configuration of Fe atom is the 3D6, 4S, 2. Now again here the Fe is in the plus to oxidation state and therefore the electronic configuration it becomes now 3D 6 4S 0 but as you can observe here the complex is diamagnetic in nature and having the no unpaired electrons now here in the high in the hybridization all the electrons they will get paired and there are no unpaired electrons are there and now the next higher magnet orbital they are the 2D orbitals 1S and 3p orbitals they will hybridize to form the d2 sp3 hybridization and this d2 sp3 hybridized orbitals they will accommodate the lone pair of electrons from the, the cyanide ions and therefore in this complex the hybridization is d2 sp3 hybridization and the geometry is the octahedral octahedral geometry of this complex so this is the another application of valence bond theory to the six coordinated complexes. Now we will see some examples of this coordinated complex of valence bond theory. The first example that is NiCO4. So you can observe here it is the sp3 hybridized complex having the tetrahedral geometry with no unpaired electrons and therefore the complex is the diamagnetic in nature. Next you can observe here the MnCl4 ion that is again it is having a plus two oxidation state. Its hybridization is sp3 hybridization and its geometry is tetrahedral geometry and it is again the paramagnetic in nature. Now next you can observe here the copper NH3 4 ion again it is having the dsp2 hybridization with one unpaired electron. So again we can observe here the one that is the, the one electron is shifted from D to the P which is unpaired and its geometry is the square plane having the one unpaired electron and it is the paramagnetic in nature. Now again next is NiNH36 ion. So in this it is a, having the hybridization sp3 d2. It is having a plus 2 oxidation state. So it is octahedral having the two unpaired electrons and it is paramagnetic in nature. Now last that is the MnCn6 ion. Again it is having the one unpaired electrons and its hybridization is d2 sp3 hybridization. Again geometry is octahedral having the one unpaired electrons and then this complex is a paramagnetic in nature. Now we will see outer orbital complexes. What are the outer orbital complexes? So the outer orbital complexes generally they have the hybridization sp3 d2 hybridization. Now see here one example that is the CO F6 3 minus. So that is the cobalt complex. Now here see first the cobalt atom is having the electronic configuration 3d7 4s2. But here you can observe here in this complex the cobalt is in plus 3 oxidation state. So it is having the electronic configuration 3D6, 4S0, 4D, 4D0 and 4D0. Now the complex is again the paramagnetic in nature having the unpaired electrons. So here the higher orbitals which are the empty that is the 1, 4S, 3P orbital and 2D orbitals. They will hybridize and therefore the hybridization is sp3. D2 hybridization and the sp3 d2 hybridized orbitals they will accommodate 
the one electron or lone pair of electrons from the chloride ion. So the chloride is a ligand, and therefore in this complex we can observe that the outer d orbitals are involved in the hybridization. That is, four d orbitals are involved in the hybridization. And therefore, it is called as the outer orbital complexes. Now we will see the inner orbital complexes. So what do you mean by inner orbitals? So the inner orbital complexes they have the hybridization d two sp three hybridization. So these complexes have the electron configuration and the hybridization is d two sp three. So we will see the example cobalt n s three six ion. So in this the cobalt is a central metal atom again having the electron configuration three d seven four s two. Now cobalt is in the plus three oxidation state. So the electron configuration it becomes now 3d6, 4s0 and 4p0. Now the complex is diamagnetic in nature, having the no unpaired electrons. So therefore, during the hybridization, all the electrons now they will get paired, and the orbitals which are involved in the hybridization they are the two d orbitals, one s and three p orbitals, and therefore the hybridization is d2 sp3 hybridization. And this d2 sp3 hybrid orbitals they will take the lone pair of electrons from the the amine ions, and therefore the inner d orbitals are involved in the hybridization. And the 3d orbitals are involved in the hybridization. Therefore, the complex is called as the inner orbital complexes. Now we will see what are the difference between the coordination number and hybridization and geometry of the some complexes. So we will see the inner orbital complexes and outer orbital complexes. The inner orbital complexes uses the the inner d orbitals in the hybridization, while the outer orbital complexes uses the outer d orbital in the hybridization. Now next we will see these are also known as the low spin complexes, having the number of less unpaired electrons as compared with the outer orbital complexes. Now outer orbital complexes they are known as the high spin complexes because they are the number of unpaired electrons. In the outer orbital complexes are more as compared to the inner orbital complexes. Now, in this, the d orbitals used in the hybridization are in the lower energy than the s and p orbitals. And in the outer orbital complex, the d orbital used in the hybridization are in the same energy level as the s and p orbitals are there. Now, the hybridization is d2 sp3 hybridization. And here the hybridization is sp3 d2. So that is the difference between the inner orbital and outer orbital complexes. Now we will see the coordination number, hybridization, and geometry of some complexes. So here we can see the coordination number is two. The hybridization is sp. The geometry is linear. And the example is that is the copper Cl2 ion and AgCl2 ion. Now next is coordination number three. The hybridization is sp2. And its geometry is trigonal planar. So, example is HgI3 ion. Now, next is coordination number four. The hybridization is sp3 and its geometry is tetrahedral. The example is NiCO4 and NiCl4 ion. Now, next coordination number four. Its hybridization is dsp2. It is having the square planar geometry. So, the examples are NiCn4 ion and platinum NH4 ion. Now, next. Fifth, that is having the coordination number five. The hybridization is sp3 hybridization, having the trigonal geometry. The example is a PCO5. Now you can observe here the coordination number six. So in the coordination number six, the hybridization is d2 sp3. The geometry is octahedral, and the example is TiH2. That is the titanium H2O6 ion and cobalt NH3-6 ion. So that are the uh, having the Hybridization D2 sp3 are the inner orbital complexes, and next that is the coordination number six having the sp3 D2 hybridization that is the outer orbital complexes. So that is the octahedral geometry. The example that is the COF6 ion and EP H2O6 ion. Now we will see the last the limitations of valence bond theory. So first limitation of valence bond theory is that this theory fails to explain the spectra of the complexes. So generally the coordination complexes they are colored and why these complexes are colored. So this theory does not explain the spectra of these complexes. Now this theory does not give the satisfactory explanation about the the hybridization that is the DSP two hybridization and 
the square root of geometry of complex copper CuNH3 for iron. The so, copper ion complex, copper tetraion complex. So if this theory does not explain why this complex is a square root of complex with the hybridization DSP2. Now next, this theory also fails to explain why some complexes in a metal with the same oxidation state. So in one of same oxidation state, one complex is inner orbital and other complex is outer orbital. In some complex are paramagnetic and some are the, the diamagnetic. Now it does not also give the quantitative interpretation of its magnetic data. In some complexes are the outer or paramagnetic and some are the diamagnetic. Now, it does not give the, the quantitative interpretation of the thermodynamics or the kinetic stabilities of coordination compounds. So this theory also does not explain why the some complexes they are the labile and why they are the some inner and they are thermodynamically inner or thermodynamically labile. So this theory also fails to give the explanation about it. So thank you friends for watching my video.